Hi, welcome to Adventure in Time and Space History, my YouTube. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And if this works, we'll be playing some music in the background. If it works. Ah, it does. Um, I'm going to be talking about the 11th Doctor, and Dr. Platon was Matt Smith. And this is uh, theme music. Uh, it's called I'm the Doctor. And I got it off of YouTube and turned it into, it's just, it's just music. And they just play the music. There's no whatsoever, it's just music. I changed it to MV3 uh, because I just love any of the Doctor Who themes, basically. Uh, I want to say, when we saw Matt Smith's first brief entrance, is when the tenth doctor is regenerating, and when he regenerates, you see the tenth doctor spinning away, and the eleventh doctor appears, which is Matt Smith, the actor. You see him, and he goes through each part of his body. He says, he goes, Oh, I got legs, I, I got legs, hands, fingers, nose, ears, chin, rely me, you know, because it's chinny boy. Basically, that's going to come in this last, the last season he played as a doctor. And then he pulls his hair back and he says, I'm a girl. And he's like, then he goes like this now. Now, a lot of people will run with that. I'm going to put this out here. A lot of people I've seen have put that out there. It's saying, oh, when Mess Mess says, I'm a girl, uh, they automatically think, Oh, the time wars can regenerate in, to gender, to a male, to a female. Um, it doesn't mean it. That right there is his hair was just a little long. He pulled it forward into him. He thought he was a girl because there are some girls who wear their hair about here, you know. And so that's what he thought. He just assumed that until he felt his almond apple, and then he realized he's not. And then he goes like this, what's this? And he said, go like this, 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 what's, what's, what's this I'm doing? He goes, I'm crashing. And then he looks up, he goes, Geronimo! And each doctor in the new, new who has, the ninth doctor had fantastic, the tenth doctor had LOZ, which means French for let's go. And then left doctor has Geronimo. And he uses that uh, not only, you know, he uses that in other uh, episodes I'm going to discuss. Um, like I said, he did three seasons, and I'm going to be doing series five. And then I'm going to do Series 6 on their video, and I'm going to do Series 7 on their video. I'm going to break it down. I'm not going to compact it like I did with the 10th Archer, so I thought I would shake things up and uh, do something a little bit different here. Um, I had to write down the list of the episodes because, you know, like me, I haven't watched, I watched his episodes, and that was a while ago, and I, I had to write it down, because like, you know, sometimes you can't remember, um, but there's, there's, um, this one basically cover some of his episodes, and, um, you know, take it from there, okay, that's all I'm going to say, uh, the first one we call the 11th Hour, that was uh, the Leather Doctor's first episode, introduction. Uh, he crash lands to Earth, and he falls in, you know, the church falls on top of the shed. Now, this little person is praying to Santa uh, about this crack in the wall, you know, and how she goes to, when she goes to bed, that she can hear noises and everything, and it's scary. And she asks Santa to send a policeman. Well, she walks out, hears a noise, and she stops, and she takes a flashlight and looks out the window. 
and there's smoke coming from the TARDIS. Well, we know it's the TARDIS, but she doesn't know. She's like, this thing, there's smoke coming from it. And she walks out. And all of a sudden, this grapple hook comes out, and his man comes climbing out. Well, the, I call him man because, it, you know, when you see the episode, she doesn't know that he's a doctor and that he's a time lord. Well, he crawls out, and it's out. It, uh, he says that he fought, fell into the library, and she says, well, you're what? He says, I was in the pool, but you were in the library. Yeah, but I fell, you know, through the library into the pool. And then when he finally gets out, and he says, he says, are you police? The girl says, are you policeman? And he says, what were you, you know, were you asking for a policeman? What for? And she mentioned about the crack in the wall. And does it scare you? And she didn't know he was talking about the crack. He said, the crack in the wall, does it scare you? And he gets out and falls down. And are you okay? And it's, I don't know, I'm, I'm so cooking, basically. And uh, the thing of it is, as I get in walk, he says, I love, I love apples. I, you know, I'm craving. That's the first, you know. And as they're walking, he is smack dab in the tree, you know. And that's the funny part I like. This is little girl's walking. And this guy, he runs, boom, right to that tree. And that's a laughable moment right there, you know. It's, it's like saying, like, the stirring's kind of off, you know, basically. Um, when he gets there, he, you know, she gives him an apple, and he doesn't like it, throws it aside, spits it out, and throws the apple. And she, he goes, yogurt. Got yogurt, and she gives him yogurt, and he spits out that yogurt. The next thing we know is the butt, the plate goes frying its bread. He says, stay out there, you know, like it's going to move. And then she bakes, you know, she fries up some ham. He doesn't like that. The funny one I like is when she cooks some beans. And he spits in his thing and he goes, beans, bad beans, bad beans. And that's, everybody knows that phrase with the eleventh doctor with this bad beans situation. Um, then he says, I, I want something. He opens the freezer and he gets fish fingers. Now, fish don't have fingers. It's fish sticks, basically. He pulls out and he opens the refrigerator custard. That's why I need fish fingers and custard. Now, we have fish sticks in the United States, but we don't have custard. That's something over from in the UK, basically. But there's probably a store here in the US that we could get custard, okay? So he makes us up. He has this big bowl. And he's dipping the fish sticks in this custard, eating. And I'm like, ew. You know, we all, when we were young, we also had these strange cravings when we were kids, you know? We ate really weird, not stuff. And, um, uh, he asked where her uh, mom was, and she said, well, I don't have a mom, you know, dad, um, about the aunt. And she said her aunt's, you know, away and stuff, and she's home alone. When he seals up that crack, and then he's like, I got to go, you know, something about the TARDIS. He had to go while the TARDIS is being reset. He had to be in, I don't understand. We don't, we don't understand, basically. And he said, well, if you would, I'll be back in such a, I, I forget how, I, probably about five minutes or so, I'll be back. So she gets that suitcase pack, and she gets her coat and boots and everything, and she sits right on top of this little suitcase, this, you know, little girl. But she tells her, tells that her name is Amelia. But the reason why... He asked her name, and she said, Amelia, I forgot that. I left that one out. Um, my mistake. <laughs> like I said, sometimes it's, you know, remembering some of the stuff, it, bits and pieces comes to you. Uh, we said, but when he comes back, now a person, a 
cut this doctor with this time machine. He can go anywhere, anytime, any day. Could be back the same day and time. You would figure he would get right the first time, basically. He shows up, and she's already an adult. And they have it out with each other, and and she locks him in the car as ties like this. And he pulls out the apple that she carved when she was a kid with the face. And it proves her that she is the raggedy man, which is my raggedy doctor. Uh, basically, that's what she called him. And it was also during this time where Personal Zero escaped. And it was this person ship was looking for person of zero. Well, with the help of someone else in a computer, they got the every clock, everything go down to zero. Reason being, reason being is so this person ship would see that zero person or zero is down here on Earth. Well, it uh, recaptures Prisoner Zero, and he calls it, and he calls them to come back to Earth. Now, you just sent this, this ship, they left. You called the thing back. It's like, hello, you just saved the Earth. You're calling the thing back. But the doctor always has his way of doing things. Um, the next thing that we know is he's putting on these clothes, which they're patient's clothes, which is kind of funny, you know, in a way. And as he's dressing, he's like, does this look good? This look? And the ship comes down, and he asks about, you know, the earth and stuff. And he says, how many, how many um, enemies He's all oh, there's been so many of them shows each and every enemy of the doctor, you know, the enemies and down here on earth. He said, Well, what happened to that? And it goes from the first doctor all the way to tenth doctor, and then after the tenth doctor, the eleventh doctor walks through and he goes, He's got bow ties. He says, I'm the doctor, by the way. Basically just run. And the ship goes and it's gone. And all of a sudden, the key starts to light up in his hand. And he goes run towards the TARDIS, and he's going to be back. Now, here's, this, here's the thing. Like I said, for someone who's got a time machine, he surely has. He's surely off key during that one. He shows up a little bit later with, time, with Amy. Um... She was in a nightgown and put slippers on and everything. He whisked her, he took her on their trip. And she got, and he took her the next episode called A Beast Below. And this is about a star well. Um, in this uh, rock, huge rock with, you know, building or buildings and everything. And Star World was being uh, shocked and stuff like that to keep under submission to be able to, you know, make this ship rock, whatever you want to call it, go along in space. And um, and when, when the doctor found out about it, um, they eventually he had made the decision of stopping this. Now, instead of the stairwell, stairwell, star whale, sorry, did that right? Instead of leaving and saying, okay, I'm friendly free. It's, it was the last of its kind. That's another reason why the doctor was so moved by it, because he was the last of his kind, you know? And so happens, um, the Star World still stayed and kept this 
rock type thing afloat. Even though it was released of its torment, it still decided to stay, uh, which says a lot. Uh, the next episode, sorry, is called Victor at the Daleks. Now, uh, Tardis has a phone. It was ringing. She picked, Amy picked up the answer. It was Winston Churchill. And he, he told Winston Churchill he'll be there right away. Now, you know, you're out, out in the middle of nowhere. And someone from their timeline and stuff like this calls. Now, you have to understand. Uh, the TARDIS is different, so it doesn't really matter what time or what, whenever or whenever that is. They go to Earth and meet Winston Churchill, and then Churchill shows the Ironsides, which, in fact, are Daleks. Now, bear in mind, Winston Churchill didn't know that these Daleks were enemies. That they were Daleks. He said that they were my iron sides. Um, basically, the Daleks wove themselves into Earth. In one, I don't know if it was World War One or World War Two. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I think it was two. Um, basically, and they wove themselves down this war, and they made themselves so innocent. He picked up a pipe. He was hitting and says, you're my enemy. You're the Daleks. You're everything I despise. And then he says, well, I'm the doctor. And um, that got, you know, that was his confession. That's what they needed. There was a spaceship. The Dalek ship was up in space. The doctor goes up there, and however he did, he he um he worked his way out of that, and um went back to you know came back to down to earth here, and the guy that they met previously that said he had so many ideas tingle in his head, and he came up with all these things. That would not fit this era, you know, and this war. That were certainly totally like somewhere in the future, you know. And um, basically, um, oh sheesh, he had like a time bomb thing that it was was going around a circle, and it was the lights were, you know, lighting up, and in and they're trying to, you know, trying to get this this guy to think of emotions. Something the Daleks don't have is to feel, to, you know, all the stuff that makes us human. And it was because of that that saved him, is because of this. And apparently he, you know, after that he packed up his bag and... You know, he was going to go. And, uh, like I said, the doctor saved that day again. Uh, the next one we see is the time of the angels. And next one will be flesh and blood. F no, not flesh and blood. Yeah. Flesh and stone. Sorry, not blood. Flesh and stone. And basically... Uh, this is where we see River Song the first time. And later on, we will come to find out more about River Song. Um, she's in a ship, and and she falls out, and and basically the turret doors open up, and she comes flying in and knocks Matt Smith over, you know? And she goes, follow that ship. And um uh, here to come to find out is they had weeping angels on that ship. Now, we've seen weeping angels with the 10th Doctor. This is the second time we've seen them. Um, basically, 
uh, whoever looks like an angel, be whoever what you know, whoever sees the angel becomes an angel. Well, well, Derber Song was going through the diary with the, the doctor, which wasn't syncing up because it was earlier. Earlier, basically. Um, uh, basically, <laughs> uh, oh, geez, mine just keeps going. Um, in the end, Amy is saved, basically. She has a speck of dust in her eye when, when she was watching that angel on the screen. Um, but when I said she was saved is because the doctor and what he did is there was a crack and he let all the angels get sucked into that. And because of that, that released that released the angel that got hold of Amy by her sight, seeing the angel on the video. At the end, we see River Songs and Handcuffs. And she says, we'll meet again until the Pandorica opens. Now, you know, that's, that, that's going to be a long time before I get, you know, to that episode there. Uh, the next one is called The Vampires of Venice. Now, Amy and Rory were going to get married, so basically, the doctor was giving them, you know, a present, basically, you know, his way, you know, and what better place to do it would be Venice, you know, romantic thing. Well, here to come to find out, there was vampires, but they were, uh, they were creatures that they could uh, mask and look like a vampire and look like they were, that they're human. And towards the end, um, uh, they had a thing on top there to cause it to rain. So, so Venice can totally flood over. Now, Venice has already got surrounded by water. But this rain that was unnatural caused to bring the rain down was to flood up Venice so they could, you know, be able to conquer the earth because of this. Well, the doctor made it so that that never happened. And... Basically, he saved the day. Um, so, that, you know, this story, I mean, it's it's whatever you perceive, basically. But that's why I perceived about it. Uh, the next one is called, uh, next episode is called Amy's Choice. Now, this one I find somewhat interesting, basically. Um, it was a story set for the Dream Lord, and Amy had to make her choice, either Rory or the Doctor. It was she had to choose one or the other, and so they would be flipping back and forth. One, one, one part. Amy and Rory were married, and she was pregnant. And then tweet, 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 you know, the sound of the birds, they woke up and they weren't a TARDIS. So they had to realize which was real and which was a dream. Now, you would, it, it would, flipping back and forth like that, it would be hard to tell what is real and what's not real, basically. Um... Last few parts of it, it started going. The tires started going towards uh, a cold star, so um, it started frosting up in the tires. They got blankets, trying to keep warm and everything, and was going from one place back. And and 
finally Amy made a choice and because of that the dream lord was defeated. Uh, the doctor had the uh, turtles open up the eagle which is you know specks a little dust and they asked well were you the dream lord and and I think that's what was asked basically but he says I choose my companions with care which means you know I know you know I know who you know who would be my companions you know trusted in everything uh, the next one is Hungry, the hungry earth and cold blood, which are side by side. This is where we meet the Salerans again. The Salerans we met uh, before was in the classic Doctor Who, is when we meet the Salerans. So in the New Who, this is the first time we meet, meet the Salerians, basically, if I said right. Uh, basically, they came to earth, supposedly. And there was a no there was a noise, you know, the, they're waving it, you know. They come there and um apparently uh they walked to this barn and heard this noise and it was a drill drilling down to under was drilling underneath the earth. And in that area they're trying to stop the drill. And eventually, Amy got pulled down underground. Okay? And he tried to save her. You know, to get her not, you know, try to keep her from, that's the reason why they call it the Hunger Earth. It was, um, and the whole premise is, is the Salarians called the human race a bunch of apes. They were lizards. What they wanted to try to do is they wanted they were the they were there first. You know, they were here before the apes, basically, in their mind. Um uh, one of the Slurin sisters was killed and she was taking vengeance, their sister was taking vengeance on the death of her sister to the apes. And one of the humans got infected with uh, whatever it is, and there was no cure. Well, um, through negotiations, the doctor made a contract between the humans and the Salarians. Now, uh, the, the Salarians went into hibernation. As they were doing it, as they were all of a sudden the crack in the crack in down below where the Tartars was, was uh, there was a crack right there. And the doc doctor said, get in the Tartars, you know, get telling Amy to get in the Tartars. All of a sudden this crack, this thing hit Rory. It erased him. Wiped him out like he never even existed. And Amy's all distraught in the TARDIS. The doctor's trying to get her to, oh, how did you guys, you know, trying to get her to remember. And she never recovers from that. She never, she ends up just doesn't even know about him, doesn't have a memory of him. Um, the next, the next one, the next episode, which I do really love, and it is a little bit of a tearjerker, it's Vincent and the Doctor, and, um, well, first of all, we're, uh, Amy and the Doctor go to this museum, and this guy's talking about Vincent Van Gogh, you know, the famous painter, and, and stuff like that. 
and uh, there was a chair seat we're looking at, and there was something in there, and he um, asked the curator about the story of the church, and, you know, just a little history. They go back in time, and here it was, there was a creature that no one else could see, but Vincent van Gogh could. You know, he, he was able to see it for some reason. And so, apparently, you know, that creature was injured to a point and there was no way for it to survive, basically. And um, they decide to give Vincent van Gogh a trip in, in the TARDIS back to that museum. And he walked in and he he was like in awe and the doctor walked up to the career talked about where does Van Gogh rate and he started talking how and you can see Vincent's you know starting to tear up and basically and and, and uh, the doctor says thought it was hurting him he says no no he says tears of joy tears of joy and he, you know, he goes, kisses on, you know, on the side cheek. And he says, sorry for my beer, my for me. And then they go back to his time zone. And he says, you're the first doctor. And he says all this now. He says, I'm going to become a new man. I'm going to go. And then they go back to the museum. And it's the same museum they were before. And here to come find out, the guy said that he killed himself. And Amy was devastated. Because they did everything they could because Vincent van Gogh suffered from, you know, illness. You know, we didn't know what, we didn't know, you know, back then they didn't know what it was, but we do. But he suffered from that. And he thought that is because of that pain, he was able to paint, you know, take that pain and use it and Amy was sad because she's like thinking we never made a difference we never made a difference and if I could remember Matt's speech and uh, Matt's speech in that you know he's saying to Amy about that <laughs> um, but sorry for the sidetrack here but I am going to do um, I am not going to do a Doctor Who one on uh, you know all the famous speeches of some of the doctors and speeches that just you know are really we know that they're stand out alone type of speeches uh, the next one is we see the lodger and it's funny because Amy gets stuck in the TARDIS it can't materialize. And he's talking on a headphone. And the thing of it is, he goes, this guy's as a as a roommate, basically. Shows him the credentials, which is the science, you know, his science paper, basically. And shows him the money and everything. He shows his room and all this that. As he's talking to Amy, he says, anyone who hears this thinks they're gibberish. Um, the whole thing is, is all of a sudden there's a stain in the ceiling. And one of the, in one of the part of this episode, the guy, he, he's uh, running, you know, who, who lives there, touches it, and because of that, gets real sick. So the doctor has to mix all these stuff together to counteract what that you know thing is. And and what's really funny is to get this guy to really realize what he's doing, he has the head bottom. And it's like okay, this is interesting because every time he's like that's when he starts seeing. And at the end they find out that there's no top floor. So they go all the way up there because they hear someone, and it's Sophie, which is the girl that this guy, you know, he cares about her, that he loves, but he won't say it to her. 
uh, he goes up and she's up there and um, then the thing start taking the doctor and stuff like this and says well we found a pilot we found a pilot and um, apparently um, something that the doctor mentions I forget his, the character's name of the guy he think, he says it's all worth it he says yeah and he goes Geronimo and puts his hand down like this and then the doctor says why do you want to stay what you know what is keeping you here and he goes Sophie Sophie I love Sophie and then you hear him, he said, well, kiss the girl. And Amy goes, kiss the girl. And when they do, they had the beeline out. And the whole thing, the shit, you know, the, you know, whatever it was looking like, the top part of that house thing, you know, the holographic thing goes and it's a ship it flies up out of there and then the TARDIS was able to land but um, he was about getting ready to leave and he put the keys down and they come back and they said take the keys you can come back anytime you want and um, I think it was it was a, it was a neat episode I mean I mean, it wasn't all, you know, the great, but the neat part is he was using non-alien technology. He was not using sonic screwdriver. He wasn't using any git gadgets. He was just using that. He was just using stuff that wouldn't give it away. Uh, the next one is called the Pandorica opens. This is where we meet River Song. Remember the comment back with uh, those uh, weeping angels? And she said, she said, you'll see me again when the Pandorica opens. They go back and there's this translation. Um, you know, basically. In they go, uh, I forget what was said. Um, he goes back uh, to this place, to this tent, and this person will say, well, Cleopatra will see you now. And uh, when he finds out Cleopatra's river song, and she says, you never answer your phone, you know? So, uh, you know, they worked it all out, and they they were in horses, and they were riding, and they find this place, and they go down below, and there's this thing, the Pandorica. It's a box, and um, and they're going to each thing, and she's Sartar, and, and all the Cybermen, and Daleks, and... He also, he's out there with all these Roman soldiers and everything. Um, he makes that speech. And, you know, it's, it's an interesting speech, basically. He says, you know, for all those, you know, stop whizzing around. You know, everyone wants a Pandorica. Come down here and take it for me. Let someone else try, basically. Um, apparently... The Satyrans, the Cyberman. Um, but before that, all the Romans. Now, okay. Uh, doctor sent River to go back to Amy's house. And here she finds out that they have taken that from. Amy, you know, she has the book of Roman soldiers. She has the book about the Pandorica. This was all taken from Amy's memories, Amy's, you know, 
taken from Amy, basically. And <coughs> the Roman soldiers, uh, one of them was Rory. <coughs> Sorry. And the one of them was, was Rory. And he told her to get away. And his he's like can't stop and he can't stop his hand and came out Luga and he shot Amy. And he's like and he warned her to you know to to get away basically because he knew was what he was gonna do. And um but before that the doctor was put into the Pandorica and he and he had time force, he had time, he had manipulator, basically, who can make him. He came back, gave, um, gave Rory his sonic screwdriver and told him to put it in Amy's top pocket. And, um, But the Pandorica was keeping Amy up basically a lot. Basically. Um, he waited 2,000 2, years. He stayed with him Pandorica for 2,000 years. He waited. And... Uh, the second part of the Pandora opens is called the Big Bang Theory, which, which a lot of, um, which is basically re rebooting the universe. Basically, if it all it all boils down to that. Um, the thing of it is, is that when the Pandora opens, the only way it opens is because he got Amelia to come to the museum. You know, back in history, you know, and because of that, it op the Pandora opens, and it was Amy was in it, and she says, "This is going to get very." And she goes like this, and she realizes that was her when she was young, when she was younger, I got a kid basically, and I uh, she ends up meeting, seeing Roy again, and of course he's still plastic basically um and also on top of this we've noticed and you would notice um he said everything basically is like the planet's still dying you know this is just a show and uh, that's basically why he was able to to be there um so they were out there and they were hearing this noise and he says the TARDIS he says trust the plastic you know his ear basically and he doctor held up the thing and you could hear it and what was it was the TARDIS I'm sorry my love you know, it kept repeating over and over again. And he got the vortex manipulator and went to TARDIS and says, um, and then um, saved um, River. And um, the funny part is where uh, Dalek, the light gave it some light and it was begging for mercy. <laughs> and River says, what? And it begs for mercy, 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 and she shoots it. It's like, you beg me for mercy? Boom. You know? I don't care. You're darling. You're dead. Um, and basically what he did is he got into the Pandorica and wired it up here. And, uh, and before he went up, he wanted to talk to Amy. And I knew, you could tell Amy didn't want him to do this, but he knew he needed to reboot the universe. And it was because of his TARDIS giving the sun and was going to explode. <coughs> Excuse me. So, basically, 
he's staying up there the universe and on the little thing is she, the river song says Geronimo because that's what he had on her things that said and at the end you see him um, talking to Amelia which is the younger and telling her you know telling her thing we're all stories and then just make it a good one and the doctor fades, but he was never there, never. And when she wakes up, it's the day, her wedding day. Her mom and dad are alive. So, I mean, you know, she's shocked, basically. After they had the wedding, they were the receptionist. Reception, not receptionist, reception. And uh, they were sitting there, and um, Maria handed her a book, and she flipped into the pages, and they're all blank. And she's sitting on there, and her tear comes a tear comes down her eyes and hit the book, and and Maria says, "You're sad," you know, something like that. And that's when she stood stood up, you know, and talked about the raggy old man and all this. That she talked about, she called out the doctor and she mentioned about the story. The reason why you told me, da, 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 you know, just going into her speech. And all of a sudden, something borrowed. Some was it something new, something borrowed, and something blue. Here comes the TARDIS in the middle. And she goes like this. She knocks on the door, Doctor. And he pops out. He says, I'm I'm a man, I'm Amy's imaginary friend. He says, I'm gonna I'll move the TARDIS. So I'm gonna hear from the dancing. And then he gives um uh, he gives uh, River Song her diary back and he says, I never looked at it. And um, basically, he said, Are you married? She said, Are you married? Or, or something like that. And she goes, Yes. He says, Yes, are you married? Or, and it's kind of a bantering back and forth, basically, because she knows what the future is, but he doesn't, you know? And uh, so happens. Uh, the funny part is you see him trying to dance. Now this is really weird. He's he's a doctor, he should know how to dance basically. And it was really funny watching Matt Smith doing his dancing scenes and stuff like that. And uh, it's really hilarious. Now um I'm gonna make a you know I'm gonna talk a little bit about this. Um, basically, Matt Smith has energy of energy, but the wisdom of an old man, basically. Uh, when Matt Smith got the role, he was 26. He never grew up without watching Doctor Who, but he did the research, and because he did the research, he was a really good doctor and he he played him very very well I mean I mean there were some episodes that were like Bleh. but he made something of him that he did he 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 would pull all sorts of things just to make it interesting even even if uh, the episode was you know, that episode, that, that script, there was no excitement, and it was like, yeah, you know, not really excitable and stuff like that. He still pulled it off to still grab your attention. And um, this is what I love about him. And, yes, yeah, some people say he, because he was eye candy, because he was so young, I will say he was handsome, you know, and 
I will admit, yeah, all I would say is hot, you know. The doctor could be hot looking, who knows, you know. I mean, he could be old, he could be young. It doesn't really matter. It's just that it's whatever he regenerates into. It's, you know, it's like, you, like they say, you never regenerate, you never know what you're going to end up with. So he would never know what is basically, uh, basically turn out. And like I, like I'm gonna say, is Matt Smith did his character of the doctor well, and uh, basically, um, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed his era, and. Um, it's going to be exciting doing a, a series six uh, of the 11th Doctor and the episodes there. Um, I figured this would be, you know, this would be the best thing to do is to break it up. Instead of just, like I said, instead of, instead of squishing it in, one video just spread it out um i may throw out a little i mean the next one i may um mention some of the speeches in the next two videos who knows i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna keep you guys on edge here i want you to like okay what else is you know what's she gonna you know what else is she gonna about um, you know, it, it's interesting. I got into Doctor Who because of New Who. And if there was no New Who, I would not known about, about this, uh, sh this show that was sh is taped over in the UK, basically. I wouldn't know anything about it. And like I said, I started watching it and, um... I watched all the new episodes all the way up to the end of the 12th Doctor. Um, and then I went back and during during watching New Who, I went back and started watching the classic episodes just to get a feel for this character. I will say this. Um, I know a lot of people that like say, well, you know, we should uh, time Wars can be gender can be regenerate into a woman. Well, um, history shows you throughout uh, the Doctor, throughout the timeline of the Doctor, it was always a male. But if you like the woman Doctor, then fine. You know, if you like a woman Doctor, if you like the, a female Doctor, that's fine. You know, that's that's okay. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and and basically judge you just because you like the female doctor. Um, I'm happy. I most likely like a male doctor. But that's that's me. That's, you know, my taste. And there's some people out there that also agree with me that say the doctor is male. There's proven history, you know, basically. But um, all I have to say is it's been an interesting discussion and review of the doctors. Like I said, I did 9 and 10. And I'm breaking this one out because of his seasons, basically. And so, like I said, I'm doing things different. I'm... I, I, you learn to, you know, you learn over a period of time of what, what's, you know, as you go along. I'm like I said, I'm, I'm new to all this, and I'm basically um, learning step by step, um, learning how to change things up, basically, and stuff like that. Um, it's just, 
All I want to say is if you like what I talked about, you know, about the Eleventh Doctor and the episodes, you know, Life on Review and stuff like that, or about Matt Smith, basically, in general, um, give my video a like and also comment below. Um, you can, uh, Give critique that you can critique or whatever. Give me, you know, let me know what I need to improve, what you liked, uh, basically in the comments below here. Um, subscribe to the channel and share, share this video, let others see it, you know, let. You know, let it let others know about it. You know, let others know that you know basically share it. And um, I have a fellow YouTuber who also has a Facebook on a Facebook basically um, group on Facebook, and he also has a channel called the Tartazone. He's a fellow YouTuber. He's also, you know, has his own Facebook group on Facebook. So check him out. It's called the Tardis Zone. Um, he, he has lots of information pertaining to Doctor Who and uh, other things in general. He just doesn't narrow it down to Doctor Who. There's other things he covers as well. Uh, he he does some really good videos, and he also has a live chat where they have it's a fan call in uh, where fans call in and talk about Doctor Who, talk about uh, how they feel about certain things or whatever topic they want to talk about. You know that he throws out that talk about. It, it's where we can get together as fans, be with other fans, and be able to share our passion. So, like, share, share, and comment. And by the way, check out former U YouTuber, The Tardis Zone. So, y'all have a good day. Or wherever you are in the world. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.